Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional checking in team number. Well, what time is it? 9.30, the McGuanico Bears uh, coming in from McGuanico. 9.30, absolutely phenomenal season so far. Uh, winners at the Midwest Regional just a couple weeks ago and definitely looking to be uh, one of the uh, locks here at the Wisconsin Regional as well, too. Take a look at 9.30 and what they have to offer this year. Uh, you know, honestly, a few years back, uh, world finalists, uh, and this team has just been kind of on that up, uh, up trajectory the entire time. So as we go through this on here, let's take a look. They got an awesome uh, floor intake coming in, a great claw. I love their elevator on this robot. We're going to be talking about some, some position control as well, too. Let's learn more about 930. Come up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Right, let's start off on this robot talking about the arm and manipulator. 930's been doing such a fantastic job uh, scoring when I saw you at the Midwest Regional. So I'm excited to hear more about what's gone into uh, these areas for your robot. How did you come up with it? And uh, detail just more about what's gone into it. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. So starting off with the arm, um, we went with a carbon fiber arm. It offers a lighter base for us. Um, we used to have an aluminum one, but we wanted to keep as, uh, things as, um, as light as possible so that we weren't tipping um, when going into go up to score, go down to intake, whatever you're doing with there. Um, and then kind of moving up into the manipulator, um, we went through multiple variations. Uh, we're finding some troubles and then um, obviously through utilization of uh, Wild Stang's um, Open Alliance, uh, we kind of liked their idea. We made it fit our robot better. Um, we changed some of the spacing here. We added our own, um, our own spacers on the end of the manipulator so that we weren't burning holes in the carpet by constantly running these belts into the ground. Um, and yeah, we went with the polyurethane belts because they grip the cone pretty nice. Um, interesting to hear about Wild Stang. So obviously you paired up with them at the Midwest Regional yep. as well too, so it was cool for that. Um, you know, when you're looking from inspiration for teams, like how do you actually take that and incorporate it? Or I guess at what stage? Because you probably had your own design, I'm guessing, for things, right? Yep. So how did how did you take what you had and then incorporate that to what uh, Wild Sting was showing off, for example? So we through our testing with designs, we obviously found out that things weren't working uh, necessarily well. Um, we had a very common looking uh, manipulator before this, but we took into consideration of you know what Wild Sting was doing and then kind of made it our own by improving upon the things that we were struggling with. So we struggled with intaking cubes a lot. Um, they would be bouncing around off of our manipulator. So, I mean, obviously attacking it from a vertical kind of position rather than horizontal um, allowed us to grab those a lot easier. And then it also offered the spacing and being able to grip the cone and not lose it when going under heavy defense. Well, we're going to let Ryder hop on the controls here and bring in uh, Matt to talk about the uh, elevator, and that will show off a few things uh, that go off of the elevator as well, too. So, Matt, talk to me more about uh, what's gone into the composition of your elevator, and I know we'll be getting into some position control later, but um, maybe we can show some stuff moving on the robot, too. It would be great. All right, so for, for this year, we chose a continuous elevator. This means that the carriage will actually come up to the top of the first stage before we before the rest of the, car uh, rest of the elevator moves up. So... Um, one of the unique things about this elevator is that our belt actually runs through the tubing, so it run so um, it runs through in, in between the two by ones, which allows it to uh, be driven up. Um, also, so as you can see, there's no bars connecting each of these two stages, so this allows us to run our arm all the way through, both back and forth. Uh, we did this by essentially uh, adding these little plates to our bearing blocks that. Um, retain the stages and keep them connected while allowing them to run up uh, together. Um, so uh, our, our gearbox here, so it's run by uh, two Neos uh, with the, uh, two gears that uh, spin and run these belts that run into two another uh, set of pulleys in here that will drive, just move this uh, the belt through in the tubing and drive the rest of the elevator all the way up. So, One of the things I really like on your elevator is you're keeping all your gear in really low, right, to keep your CG low. Was that something that your team had in consideration as well? Yes, yeah, so in 2018, we used a cascading elevator. Sure. Uh, we we uh, looked at using one of those. We determined that using that would essentially waste um, 
waste our center of gravity because we'd be sending up a portion of our elevator up before the rest of the carriage. So that's that's why we made this tra transition to a continuous rather than a cascading. That's a good transition to Aylin. Talk more about the uh, carriage area as well. Uh, I saw you have a floor intake too, so I love this here. Kind of what's gone all into that and uh, some of the strategy. I mean, you have such a, a great manipulator here as well. Uh, why was it necessary to go that route for your team uh, to have a, another floor intake as well and talk more about that carriage? So, sure, so starting with the carriage, um, the belt is attached on the top of the carriage as well as the bottom of the carriage. So that continuous belt allows it to move um, first and then uh, Separately to control the arm, uh, we have a dead axle that runs across here. Um, and then over the top, we have max spline. And we have two separate pieces, one on each side. Um, one side moves with the arm on this side, and then the other side moves with the wrist on this side. So with the dead axle, you're able to have them lined while also being able to rotate separately. Um, and then for the intake, um, this is something that we're starting to look into do is to allow us to get uh, easy links um, in matches. We've looked at um, adding a uh, low scoring um, only cube and um, it allows us to intake cubes from the ground while also scoring them in the low really quickly. Um, we use a motor to extend it down here. If I can kind of move it here. And then we uh, spin the wheels to bring the cube in and um, yeah. So at this point, you actually have not, as we're interviewing, you have not used that on the field yet, Correct. right? Um, so y you have another event coming up at Greater Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks. Do you foresee yourself using that for there or the World Championship? Yes. So if, if we're um, in a match that we think we could win easily um, and we don't need as many points, uh, but we want to get that uh, ranking point, yeah. we would definitely prioritize that. Yep. Yeah. Looks really cool. Uh, I just love the full thought process, and, and obviously you have the weight to do that, and you're keeping weight low uh, as well, too. Let's uh, start to wrap up on this robot, talk about some uh, presets that have gone into it. We'll showcase more of the robot. Ed's going to talk more about that. Uh, talk to me about positional control and what, uh, what that means to your team. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of preset positions. Uh, we use encoders in the manipulator and arm right here uh, to get our angles and what angles we want, and we have a command fact, uh, factory that stores all of those angles along with um, an uh, encoder for the elevator which stores the position of the elevator that we want and as Ryder can show our high intake our arm goes to a set position same with uh, well our elevator goes to a set position same with the arm and the intake and then this goes to drop off uh, cones and cubes and we have it angled so the cone will be right over the top of the uh, pull. Sure. And then we have multiple different positions. It doesn't go just this way. We have one for picking up cones from the substation that goes this way. And then as you can see, it goes backwards and the intake still moves. Yeah, yeah, really fluent motion that, that your team is bringing as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, are you giving a consideration maybe for like a, autonomous or anything like that and how that might impact uh, future autonomous modes for you? Uh, yeah, we do like to use these positions for autonomous. Uh, I think we have a few positions that are for autonomous exclusive paths sure. uh, that we use uh, exclusively, for, ex exclusively for autonomous. So that is to pick up uh, cubes on the ground when we're driving backwards. And uh, and that's used for only one of our auto paths. Yeah. And that is uh, a lot more simpler for an auto path instead of our, our actual uh, teleop period, because in our teleop period we prefer to score, uh, not score, but pick up in front of us. Yeah. So you have to rotate around time. that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Well, McGuanago uh, Bears looking absolutely phenomenal uh, here. Of course, like I said, one of the favorites here at the Wisconsin Regional. So looking forward to see how well you do. Of course, at like Greater Pittsburgh as well. And then mm -hmm. we'll see you at the World Championship. So good luck at this event and throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.